Hello, this is Toby Ricketts, voiceover artist, and uh, this is VO Life, my foray into video blogging for fun to see what happens. Um, and I, I'm coming to you from my desk in my studio where I record the voiceovers. Um, and I've, it's very messy, and I didn't tidy up. I thought, shall I tidy up? And then I thought, no, this is real. This is realistic. And I have not one, not two, not three, but four water bottles, because water is very important. But this podcast is not about water being important, although it really is. It's about, um, we're going to start watching voiceover commercials and kind of analyzing them, famous ones, really good ones. And the one that I find is referenced the most at the moment is this ad from Nike. It's called Find Your Greatness, and it's voiced by Tom Hardy, who is an absolute legend. So what is amazing about this? Why does it get referenced so much? Basically because he sounds like an absolutely real person. And that is what people seem to be striving for. The number one thing searched for, or the, the top roles on Voices.com in, what is it? May, June 2020, real person is at the top of that list, which is an interesting trend in voiceover because it's always been about, you know, coming up this winter, I'm the voiceover man, believe anything I say. And people don't want that these days. They want they have this voice. I've gone into many voicing sessions where they say, just, just read it like yourself. And you say, well, ah, but when you get behind the microphone, it's so much harder than it sounds because you, you pick up a piece of copy and you're like, here is the copy. I'm reading it here, and it just doesn't sound. So the skill of a voiceover artist these days is to be a voiceover artist but not sound like one. And it's much more difficult than it sounds. But Tom Hardy makes it sound so easy, which is the genius of the whole thing. So let's watch the ad to start off with uh, so you can familiarize yourself, and then we'll uh, do a bit of investigation into it, okay? Greatness, it's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. It's powerful stuff. Um... But it's one of those ads that kind of creeps up on you. It's like the copy, it's, it's 68 words in 60 seconds, which is, in, which is interesting given that, you know, we read usually about 125 words per minute and that's a relaxed style. So it's very light on, on sort of text and content, but it's, it's the marrying of the script and the story. But this is not about creative writing. This is about how he's pulled off the voiceover. So there are a number of factors here. Um, one of them is pace. He's got all the time in the world, which as voiceover artists, we love because you get to really play with the script. Um, so that's one big thing. Um, if you want to do voiceovers like this, practice talking slowly. Because you'll notice that when I slow down what I'm saying, everything sounds more important. Because the fewer words you say per minute, the more important those words are. So, pace is a big thing. There's a spectrum um, on which most voiceovers lie, which is you've got like your hyper commercial reads at one end. And by that, I mean, um, uh, come into my store this weekend for beds, $59 off, now only 2199 or something. And that's traditionally been the realm of voiceover artists, that they were the ones that did this voice. Um, now that's completely gone out of fashion, as I was saying before, and it's all about real people. But right on the other end of the spectrum, you've got a flat monotone delivery. So you've got staring out of a window, not knowing what's going to happen. Can sound really depressing, can't it? And you'll notice with his read, it's not, it's not either one of those. It's not, um, actually, should we, should we just do an experiment and voice the script as a uh, commercial? 
Greatness. It's just something we made up. Somehow, we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few. For prodigies, for superstars, and the rest of us can only stand by watching. But obviously, the ad wouldn't have the impact it does if I read it like that, would it? But also, if I read it like, greatness, it's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars, and the rest of us can only stand by watching. Uninterested, disinterested, doesn't work either. So you've got to ride this line, this very fine line in between of sounding into it, but not that into it. And you notice he pitches his voice. Tom Hardy can have a really nice deep voice, but he's pitched it up. When it starts off, it's sort of greatness. It's kind of up in this register when he can go down here, but he's pitched it sort of like a, a nice everyday accessible kind of, uh, kind of space. And the last thing I want to cover is that the most important thing he's doing is really understanding the concepts that he's talking about. Like reading the script, instead of just reading words, that sounds obvious, but it's not always obvious, is thinking about what they actually mean, funnily enough. So like take the, um, take the line, you know, greatness is not some rare DNA strand, not some precious thing. It's no more unique to us than breathing. I mean, because this is what the ad is all about, right? It's that line. It's just saying it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not this rare thing. Anyone can do it, even if they're, you know, a, a normal person. Hence the normal person voiceover. So it all kind of ties together. But he does that by understanding each line. You know, greatness is, is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Um, if you made those as statements, like greatness is not some rare DNA strand, not some precious thing. It doesn't have, he, it's because he's searching. It's this internal monologue and it's got, um, it's ponderous. And I, uh, one of my um, voiceover coaches, um, Marla uh, in the United States, taught me this word ponderous, which has really affected my voiceover for performance because <clears throat> it is like you're pondering something in your head. You're thinking, how about this? No, hang on, how about this? What about this? And this is, you know, it's a, it's a real trend. And it's a good way of, of engaging people in a script because you're kind of on this journey with someone rolling around ideas around in their head, which is a powerful thing. So he's, he's rolling these ideas around in the head. He is making statements, but they don't sound like definite statements, but they don't sound like weak statements. It's right in the middle. And I think this read is all about being a real person and being right in the middle. So I challenge you to have a go at this script because I'm going to post it in my blog uh, under, under this video, which is on tobyricketts.com on the blog section there, um, the script, and have a go. See how real you can make it, because it is much harder than it sounds. And if you like, you could always email me with your go at it, and I'd love to hear it. It's uh, toby at tobyricketts.com. Thanks for joining me for another VO Life. Uh, if you've got any ideas for things I can cover, if you've got any questions, technical ones especially, then I'd be happy to answer your questions. So again, email toby at tobyricketts.com, and I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have a good VO life. <laughs> How cheesy was that? <laughs> Ridiculous. Right, what are we doing now? Something else.